嚟大有渊源。喺呢一集咧，我哋想同大家讲关于美国嘅三藩市，特别系关注美国三藩市学校关闭，主要咧系有好多嘅原因。喺三藩市嘅呢個學校關閉裏面，咧，其實唔係單單淨係三藩市嘅。如果我哋可以真係去認真睇嘅話咧，其實全美國甚至咧全世界好多唔同嘅地方咧，都係有同樣嘅問題喺度發生緊。但係今日我哋淨係喺三藩市嘅學校關閉嘅原因係乜嘢？首先咧，我哋可以睇到三藩市。嘅呢個學校關閉主要嘅原因係因為學生人數嘅下降，好多嘅地方咧面臨咗呢個生育率嘅下降，同埋家庭搬遷嘅問題，導致到學生嘅人數減少，學校咧不得已係一定要關門。預算嘅問題、財政困難、預算削減，使得咧好多學校無法繼續維持營運，尤其係小型嘅學校。疫情嘅影響 ，Covid-19 大流行期間，好多學校遭受到重創，部分嘅學生選擇咗遠程教學同埋轉校，導致咗學校咧無法繼續恢復營運。教育政策改變，有好多嘅地區政府同埋教育政策變化，例如推動合併學校同埋重組學校，可能導致到呢啲校學學校關閉。社區支持嘅減少，隨住社區支持減少同埋需求變化，好多學校咧無法繼續去獲得有必要嘅呢啲資源同埋資助，好多嘅呢一啲因素咧就促成咗學校關閉嘅現象。具體嘅情形咧都係因地區而異嘅，但係呢一啲學校關閉咧而家形成咗一個新嘅詞匯，就叫做殺校。今日我就帶大家咧，詳盡咁樣去了解呢個殺校嘅問題。When when did they close the school? I'm not sure. I'm guessing about two or three years ago. Two or three years ago. Yeah, two. And then they transfer most of the student to your school. Not my well, can't say my school. I'm I'm happily retired to Gorn J Lao. It worked it out. So yeah, I think somewhat someone worked there. Yeah, I used to be the first by Gorn J Lao. Yeah. But how how many students do you know transfer to Gordon J. Law? That I I couldn't tell you because when they close the school, transfer the kids. I I I couldn't tell you at the time I'm get their head to the son. So it, so all these students about 100 students total of class. Yeah, and all these students um spread out to the probably yeah, and all these schools they went to is all in the same district. I wouldn't imagine so because most of the newcomers live in the Chinatown area. In、uh, yeah, yeah, because we used to when I was、uh, here a long time ago in San Francisco, they sent us to different district to grow the study. Different district or different schools? Different different district. I was living in Sunset, but I have to、uh, travel to Napu to some to other other school to. Oh, that's still that's still in San Francisco, same, same district but different part of the city. Right. Oh, oh, oh. That you mean that district? district. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, is that the same district they're going to, or are they going to other district? Why not? I'm not sure, but I would guess it would be in this area. People living in Chinatown, but they have to go to Lap Hill. They have to go to Jest. That's that's possible. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 And then I think I think that's pretty tough for. To come, right, right. Every morning they have to travel in the bus, or maybe they have to transfer to different buses. Correct. Because I, I, do, I've been do that. <laughs> yeah. No. When you said district, I thought you meant like a different city. No. 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 Okay. I got it. I got it. So okay. So that's that's really bad. Yeah. With people here, they closing down the school. Yeah. They cannot come to the school right here. The school is already right here, but they cannot use it. Yeah. That's that. See, and and the thing is. Okay, so about thirty-three to four percent of the students in San Francisco are Chinese or Asian. Okay, Asian. But yet, they—if you look at the statistics, right—the Asian kids are the highest achieving in terms of test scores, in terms of attendance. They have the best attendance rate. They have the highest test scores. Okay, and they're the they're the best students, generally speaking. Okay. 
if the district continues along these lines and start closing schools where predominantly are Asian kids, especially when you're in Chinatown, and the district's gonna continue to lose that Asian population, I guarantee you the test scores of the school district are gonna go down. The academic is gonna go down. And you know, that's just common sense, you know, you you know, you're forcing your best students out of the school district to just go elsewhere. So they're closing down this one, they're combining the city into other schools. Correct. And the other schools, do they uh, keep on using Atwin and Anita Lee name? They, do they? No, because I mean, if these kids are transferred to say Gordon J. Lau, they become Gordon J. Lau students or Spring Valley or Jane Parker students. They trying to name other school to Atwin and Anita? I do not know that. I, I don't think they have the plan for that. No. Yeah. Or it's really sad for us, you know, we, we, we knowing how good at winning the yeah. Anita, they have uh, done so much for the Islanders community, all the light, but you can't keep their legacy. Yeah. yeah. Keep, keep the, um, the main. So it, that's the really sad part. Yeah. Because I know that, uh, Mary Lee was very interested in education. When I was a principal at Point J. Lau, you know, we had a couple of conversations and education was one of the priorities. I knew you were, you, I saw you when he passed away that night at the hospital. So you were a uh, really long time friend, good friend. Sorry, I knew him, I knew him for a quarter of a century. I knew him through the community. I also knew him in my early work at City Hall. I knew him when he was at Public Works. I knew him when he, I voted to make him the city administrator uh, but yes, I mean, there's no question that, uh, Ed should be honored. And there are many other former mayors, Willie Brown, Diane Feinstein, who have schools named after them. Uh, but I mean, the number one real most important issue is making sure that we have a public education system in San Francisco that works for our kids. And that doesn't become a privatized public education or, you know, private education system. And the larger picture here is that the San Francisco school district's enrollment has fallen from 65,000 students to now 48,000 students. Uh, and that means less money for the school district. And you have to analyze that a lot of these families are now sending their kids to private or parochial schools at great additional financial cost to them. Anita 目標他們的學校群體就是新移民這個學校主要是來服務一些剛剛到美國的學生特別是英語能力是非常有限的新移民和難民學生課程的設計這間學校是專門做一些英文作為第二語言的課程即是說是ESL的語言課程 英文水平同時也提供他們學科的教學和學科並提供心理和社區的支持 
學校咧積極咁樣同家庭同埋社區合作，促進家庭、家長同埋呢個學校咧有活動啦，同埋支持學生嘅學習。佢哋係特別多元性同埋包容性。Edwin and Anita Lee Newcomer School 提供多樣性、包容性嘅學校環境，尊重同埋重視每一個學生嘅背景同埋文化。So it's putting burdens on the family's economic situation. Because these families so value having quality education, the society I want to live in, and I think we all need to live in, is one where we invest and make sure that our public education is as good as any private or parochial education, so that we don't lose our school kids. And 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 that starts a downward spiral. And Principal Chu is absolutely right. This is all. This is not about blaming one superintendent. Or blaming members of a school board,、uh, the way I see this is that it is the obligation of the city, of the school district, of parents, of civic leaders, of philanthropic leaders to all come together to rescue the school district. And you know, there are some people who have this attitude about, well, I don't have kids in the schools, so it's not my problem. And there are some politicians、uh, at city hall who are like, hey, this is not part of our responsibility. Which Technically speaking, it's true. I mean, the city of San Francisco, its mayor,、uh, doesn't have any direct control over the school district. The school district elects its own board.、Um, it gets its funding from the state. But I think we're all better when we work together. And some of the things that Principal Chu is saying,、uh, which are tragic. I mean, the fact that the school district invested tens of millions of dollars into a payroll system that didn't work. They didn't know what they were doing.、Um, Could have been handled better if they used the technical assistance of the city. We're, I mean, this the city that I work for has 60 departments, has a budget of 15 billion dollars. We replace payroll systems all the time for different departments. We've never, and our accounting systems, we don't have this kind of problem because we have the expert、uh, department of technology. Which, while I believe that the school district is in trouble. Um, I don't think it is beyond repair. I think that if we actually were to launch a concerted, intentional effort, we can turn the school district around. And the way that starts is by not closing schools that are working for students and their families. That is only going to lead to more of the same, which is some of these parents. When they know that Spring Valley, where they've been, which is a high-performing school, or Gene Parker, which is a high-performing school, or Yikuo, which is a high-performing school, are closed, they're going to take their kids out of the district, and it's going the number is going to continue to go down with the more loss of revenue and more loss of public trust and confidence. And part of what is so sad is that, and and I will blame this on this particular superintendent. Uh, which is that the lack of communication, the lack of involvement with the community, parents who care so deeply about their children and about their futures and about their education—I mean, these are the most important things that a parent can do for their child is to give them a good education, right? That's that is the measure of how you are going to succeed in life. That is the measure as to the quality of life that you're going to have. That is the measure of what your economic success is going to be, and actually, most importantly, if you don't have education, you can't participate in a democracy with knowledge. It is. I mean, the, you, I, I, I'm not trying to exaggerate, but education is the most important thing that a civilized society can provide to future generations. And right now, what we have to do is. Stop the process, and I and I thank Principal Chu and Principal Chin,、uh, who was Principal Chin was the principal of Spring Valley School for thirty for thirty years. I mean, can you imagine thirty years? She was the principal of that school、um, for standing with me on day one with all these kids and all these parents from Spring Valley, from Yikuo, from Gene Parker, to say this process has to stop. They started in the wrong way. And you know, as much as I don't like to see instability at the school district, I think the fact that now the mayor has joined me and other supervisors have joined me, and today 
it is going to be formally announced that the superintendent is going to resign. Now, this is not something that makes me happy because the next days and weeks are a moment that we need to have stability in the school district. So I don't want people to run around and be joyful that uh, that the school district has gotten rid of the superintendent. This is a moment where we all need to help the school district get the resources that it needs, um, whether it's technical resources around fixing their payroll system, whether it's financial resources. Uh, and, and I want to actually acknowledge the city. We, we have money that we give to the school district extra than they get from the state. And I think we need to have much more careful oversight of that money. Um, and I think this is an opportunity to keep certain schools open. It's an opportunity to get civic and philanthropic leaders. I mean, we have, you know, many billionaires in San Francisco who should have an interest in the school system. And what we need is the leadership to bring everybody together. And I, and I do also want to say that this mayor has appointed most of the members of the school because, and, and what Principal Chu said is absolutely right, uh, the school board that was recalled. announce a school closure plan uh, which disproportionately impacted schools around Chinatown and disproportionately impacted Asian American students and their families um, I immediately held a rally and press conference with the students and parents from Yikuo Elementary and from Spring Valley Elementary and from Gene Parker, which are the three schools here that were going to be closed, and uh, called for the school district to put their whole closure plan on hold. And uh, yesterday, I talked to uh, the president of the school board, who said that today they would be having a special meeting of the board this afternoon. Uh, and it sounds like the school district superintendent is going to resign. He mishandled this entire process, didn't reach out to the community, didn't reach out to Asian leaders, didn't reach out to the students and their parents. Uh, and I believe that we are going to hear today that the school district is going to put this entire process on hold and reconsider the entire process. So I am cautiously optimistic that things are going to change. Was too busy spending time on stupid political stuff about naming of schools. And as a result, the voters got angry and recalled all of them. That gave this mayor, Mayor Breed, the opportunity to appoint most of the members of this school board. And so now those people have to be managed. And I mean, I, I'm very disappointed that the mayor chose to, the mo her most recent appointment uh, is an appointment of a guy who actually was the architect <laughs> of the school closure program, which was not, I mean, if these people had more knowledge of the schools, let, let me give you a for instance. They should not be closing schools that they've just invested hundreds of thousands, in some cases millions of dollars, making fixes to. So this is actually an example of a school where with taxpayer dollars, we actually refurbished this facility. Same thing is true of Jean Gene Parker. Parker Elementary School. Gene Parker, they just completely redid the place. I mean, they we spent millions of dollars. That should be that should take it off of the list. There are other schools that have terrible facilities, lead, paint, old pipes. Those are the schools that should be closed. If any school should be closed, you, you know, you spent a lot of money fixing this school up. Same with uh, um, Jim Parker, also Jake Wall. Yep. Okay. Spent a lot of money. So now you have these new buildings, so to speak, and yet you're closing them down. And the, the ironic thing is you're closing schools that are primarily, like I said, Asians, Chinese. Okay. And I know this is going to 
I know this sounds bad. I've been an administrator at the elementary school. Uh, okay, so, so I was a principal of uh, elementary school, principal of middle school. I was principal at Marine for 10 years. I was an assistant principal at several high schools, okay? In my 30 some odd years of the district, not one superintendent ever said anything about helping the Chinese students, not one. Okay, I, I don't even remember if they even used the word Chinese in, in all the speeches. The Chinese the Asians never have been given any special help, even though they deserve it. Okay, for example, if you say, well, you know, what about uh, language arts? Okay, so what they're saying is, okay, all the English, uh, the ESL program at that time or uh, what have you, right? It's all in competency. So if the Latino kids or Chinese kids take English as a second language, okay? But there was no special emphasis given to help Chinese and American kids with any kind of special program, especially at the middle school, high school level. I have seen students who come from Asian countries, Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, one of right? In three, four years, they exceed, their test scores exceed those of students who were born in this country. Okay, easily. Why? Because, in, 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 you know, in the, in the Chinese culture, education is, a, is something that is of value, right? And, and education is top priority. I mean, there's a saying in Chinese that, where is it, wherever there are Chinese people, where, wherever there's water, there will be Chinese people. Education is a top priority. And even if it means that two, three generations got to live together in a housing project or whatever, they'll make it happen because they want, they know education is important. I would like to see the school district give more support to the Asian students. If, if, if anything, one more support for Asian students. And when I say that, I mean by putting more resources at the school site. You think Mr. Paskin can help? I think he can help but it's still up to the school board, right? You know, and I, 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 like I said, more resources at school site, less resources at the, at the central office. I think that's gonna be important. I also would like to see that more, how to say, more help be given to students who are falling between the cracks. And when I, and what I mean by that is, a lot of people assume that Asian kids always do well in school, okay? But there are some Asian kids who did not do well in school and did not finish high school for whatever reason because the counselor had too big of a caseload, right? And that's kind of stuff where I, I felt of the areas I like to see uh, oh. school district pay more attention to. Because who? Wait. So you in the account or how? Edwin Lee and Anita Lee Newcomer High School, Li Mang Yin Kong Lai, Sun Yi Man Ho Hao, Pito Dai Kuga Ming Wan Yu Ho, Jung Lo Yo Nan Nango Chong Hoi, Wak Jay, Lam Nango Chung Kuti Gam Mang, Nia Go Kuti, um, Ho Hao Gam Mang, Bun Hu Tai Yi Gan Ho Hao Do Le, Nigo Jo Yo Doi, Wode Yi Ho, Jo Le Tai La, He Mong Wode Wa Yan Do Ho Yi Nango, Gong Tong Jok Chu Do Le, Sun Jing Gam Yong, Liu Gai, 邊一個真係係用心係為我哋嘅華人著想，幫助我哋能夠將我哋華人嘅名聲亦都好，將我哋嘅權利亦都好，唔需要話一定要放喺第一位，但係都唔好將我哋置之不理，當咗我哋係一